In today's tutorial, we are gonna be having a look at some more infographics or ways to display some information. These are all gonna be pretty simple and you can use them in a bunch of different ways. I just think these are super sick ways of doing them. But without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects where I have a couple of different compositions set up for us already, all 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second to keep it nice and easy. The first thing that we are gonna be doing is kind of like a network thing, kind of like we did last week, but a little bit different in terms of connecting everything because last week the way we did it everything was connected to one another but for this one we want a little bit more control over what we connect with one another so i've already found a couple assets and again if you are interested in these project files they're available on the patreon at patreon.com forward slash my poll we can sign up and get all that good stuff um, on there but i have a couple different things that we are going to be dragging in and i've just found these assets on the internet nothing too fancy and once we have all of this, I'm just gonna drag it into our composition. We'll also have a background set up. I'm gonna start by scaling this down just so we can see kind of what's in here. And I already have them all labeled, so that makes it pretty easy. Now let's just move these around a little bit. And before we get too into it, I wanna cut it up just a little bit. So this one, for example, I only really want these sugar cubes. So I'm just gonna mask around the cubes instead of the whole jaw. And then I'll wanna take my anchor point by hitting Y and putting that roughly in the middle of this little shape here, just so it's gonna be a little bit easier down the line. And then with this lemon, I want one that's just a lemon. So again, I'm gonna send it G with layer selected and mask around it so that I can get just a lemon on this one. And then I'm gonna duplicate this because I do want a couple more of those peels. I'm gonna hit M to bring up the mask and then I'm gonna delete the mask. And now I'm gonna take, let's say, two of these, maybe I'll take this one right here and duplicate it, hit M. I'm just gonna select the path down here and hit V and I can move it over to a different one. And again, I wanna make sure that I hit Y and then move the anchor point to be within the center of this. And the same for this one, move that and again, this one as well. And then I'm just gonna move these over just to stack them up a little bit, just so it looks pretty cool right there. And now I wanna take these and place them kind of randomly, scatter them out a little bit, but in a way that kind of makes sense. So we have the cup as the final version of this, but then we have the ingredients over here that I'm gonna move. Let's move that that way, these this way, and then that. So what we want here is some lines connecting all of this, and we want this to connect to the pitcher. We want the, uh, we want the sugar and the lemons to connect. We want the lemon and the pitcher to connect and then we want the pitcher and the cup to connect. So you see how it's a little bit different than last week in terms of wanting a bit more control. Before we get into that, I'm just gonna move these into our assets folder just to keep it organized. And then I'm actually gonna take the lemons here and I'm just gonna pre-comp these by hitting Shift Command C and naming them lemons pre. And then I'm gonna enable this little button here just to small it up a little bit and make it so that we don't have a super large composition for what we actually need. And we can just take that, put it in the middle. You can even enable snapping and it'll snap right in the middle, right there. So next thing we wanna do is create our lines. To do that, I'm gonna have nothing selected. I'm gonna hit G to bring up my little pen tool up here. I'm gonna remove the fill, and then I'm gonna enable the stroke. And for this one, let's just do a red color just so we can see what we're doing for now. I'm gonna start by just clicking and dragging this first line, and I'm gonna click off down here, just click down there, and then I'm gonna click again and connect everything that I want to be connected on separate layers. Once that is done, we can do a similar technique like we did last time, which is going into your window and then go down to create nulls from paths. And for this one, we wanna select one of these. So let's rename this to sugar plus lemon. And then we're gonna open this up, go to contents, shape, and go to path, have the path selected, and then points follow nulls. You can move this point here and the line is gonna follow with it. I'm gonna take these three layers that we just worked with and I'm just gonna change the color of them by clicking here and then just changing the color so we can keep it nice and organized. Now this next line is the sugar and pitcher. And again, we can just this time, we can just search for path to make it a little bit quicker and then points follow nose. And then once again, we'll select all of these and we will color code them to be a different color. And then we have this one, which is our lemons and pitcher. And again, search for path, select it, and points follow nose. We can select this one and change it to a different color. Last but not least, we have pitcher plus cup. And search for path, 
select it and points follow nodes. Now we have all of this set up and let's just change this color to maybe peach, that'll work just fine. And now we have all of this, but we need to link all of these up so that if we move the lemons, for example, these points follow with it. Easiest way to do that is take these two nulls here and we don't need them to be perfect because we are gonna put all these lines behind, but we do wanna keep it roughly in the right area. So if we take the null here, which is this one right here, and then we can just link it to the lemon right there. So now if we move the lemon, this point will follow with it. And we're just gonna repeat that process with every single one of these. So the second null, this one right here, we will link that to the lemons as well. So now when we move the lemons, these two points follow with. Just rinse and repeat for all of these. Now we have all of them linked up and we can take all of these and let's just place them behind all our objects. And now we can take an element and we can move it around and we can make sure that these are always connected and it'll just give it a little bit more of an interesting look and connect it up a little bit. Now we can go a step further with this and actually display some more information with this. With a text box, for example, we can hit Command T to bring up our text tool. You can find it up here. And let's just do lemons to keep it nice and easy. Maybe change the color of this to a white-ish color. And then let's make, make sure this is centered up in the middle. And then we're gonna add a little background to like a little label. We'll just do a rectangle, remove the stroke from this, and then add a little bit of a fill. Maybe we'll do a orange, orangey color to keep with the theme of it. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle around this, hit B, and then I'm gonna align it up so it's centered up and place it behind our text. And then what we can do here is take our lemons and connect it to, parent it to the shape. And then let's move the shape to be right over here maybe, over next to it, like that. And then I'm gonna take the lemons text box and I'm gonna parent that to the lemon. So now when the lemon moves, so does our text box. We can always move this independently and it'll still be tracked. And then all we have to do to animate this or bring it to life a little bit is to add a little bit of an expression or you can animate it yourself with position keyframes. But in this case, we're just gonna select our lemons, hit P to open the position, alt click, and then we're gonna use a wiggle expression, maybe some one comma 100. And that gives us just a little bit of movement in there and you can see it moves around. So now we have a net of connected items and it's just a rinse and repeat with as many objects as you want. And it's a great way to show how maybe different departments are correlated. So you have maybe marketing, you have sales, analytics, all that stuff. And then finally goes out to the consumer or something. But in this case, we're just gonna do it with a drink. That is pretty much it for the first way of animating some data. The second type of information we're gonna be having a look at is some UI social media panels. This is always useful, when, especially in YouTube videos, you might be covering something with social medias, wanna show off some posts. And we're gonna simplify it a little bit, but make it super easy to customize later on. And again, this kind of builds on an example we did last week with the essential graphics, but just taking it to the next level. So again, for this one, I have a couple of different assets and I'm gonna drag in this first post, which is gonna be my little one post that I have here. And I'm just gonna scale this down a good bit, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my shape tool and we're gonna make this super easy. I'm gonna select a rounded rectangle. I am gonna remove the fill, unless you wanna fill, but in this case, I don't. I'm gonna make this like a dark gray and I'm kind of gonna scale out a little square here, kind of like that maybe, leave a little bit of room below and a little bit above for some UI elements like that. And then I'm just gonna align this right in the middle and we can always go in and if we select our layer, search for size, unlink it, we can go in and kind of make sure we got the look that we want. And I am gonna search for roundness with this selected. I'm just gonna round the corners just a little bit more for my taste. Now we can add a little bit more to it. Let's add some buttons to make it look like a little bit interactive. I'm just gonna select the ellipse and I'm gonna select my stroke. I'm gonna copy this color so that we can apply it to our fill and I'm gonna remove the stroke for this. And then I'm just gonna make a couple of small buttons up here just to emulate that there is something to kind of click a little bit of UI elements and that looks pretty good. We can add a little profile picture too and it's square right now. I want it with a bit of a circle. All I've got to do is, since this layer is a square, a perfect square, we can just double click our ellipse tool and it'll create a perfect mask around it, a perfect circle that is. And then we can scale it down to fit our little UI section here. Maybe scale it down just a little bit more as such. Kind of line that up with the side here. We might even take these 
maybe move them over a little bit. I even put them right there as if it's like a name or something just to spice it up and you can really customize this however you want, but just make sure you make it look pretty cool. I think I want to just scale this down just a little bit more in terms of the width. And I've got this hot icon as well that I've just imported. I got this from Noun Project. I'm just gonna move this down here somewhere on the bottom half of it. Maybe place it on the left here. Line it up pretty good. So we have a little bit of a like button. And since I have it from the Noun Project where it is an SVG file, I can always go in and if I release the compound path, it'll be a fill now. And all I wanna do here really is send this into After Effects so I have a fill of it as well. And that's a good thing about working with shapes like this. That'll just allow us to add just a little bit more animation to this. And all I really wanna do here is change the color to maybe a slight reddish, pinkish hue tone, something light and likey colored-ish. And all I'm gonna do here is add a little bit of scale to it. So I am gonna go forward to about 12 frames. I'm gonna keyframe that, go back about six frames and set it to zero. And then after about 12 frames, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy these, paste them, right click, and then keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. So now it'll come up and then it'll scale back down. You can even scale it back up if you want to. And then what I wanna do here is I'm gonna hit G to bring up my pen tool and I'm gonna remove the fill and I'm gonna add a stroke and this will just serve as the path that I wanted to take in terms of the animation. And all I gotta do here is just draw a little bit of a path here like that. And then if I search for path in here, copy that, and then hit P on our cart layer and paste it. Now we have this little animation where it kind of goes up and then we can hit U with this layer selected, remove our other layer and then take these keyframes and I'm just gonna line it up with the beginning and the end. And now we have a little heart animation that kind of floats up and scales back down. So it just kind of imitates a someone like that. Super easy, you can duplicate this a bunch of times, offset it a little bit to get whatever look you kind of want to go for there. But that is pretty much it in terms of setting up this little layout. Might even take this and move this picture up a little bit like that. And if you want to, you can always add some rounded edges to this by double clicking it with the rounded rectangle and that'll just round the corners just ever so slightly and match the rest of this. And I'm actually gonna just resize this just a little bit more and maybe take these dots, duplicate them, and move them down here as well, just to make it look a little bit nicer, like a little bit, a little bit more unified. But now, how can we make this easy to add multiple times if we wanna show multiple posts? Well, that's where Essential Graphics comes in. What we're gonna do is we are gonna take all these layers that we just made and we're gonna pre-comp them. And let's just name it Social Post Pre. And if we go into this and then go in, in our Essential Graphics tab, if you don't see it, you can go to Window, Essential Graphics, place it wherever you want. And then we are gonna select Social Post Pre. And then we are gonna take these two pictures. So Post 1, we'll drag that in, and the Profile picture as well. And we just rename these to Profile, and we'll name this to Post. So now we can change the Profile picture super easily, and we can change the Post as well. So going back into our little composition here, we now have this Essential Gra Properties tab in our pre-comp settings. And let's drag in a couple more pictures. So I have two more posts. I'm just gonna drag these in and put them in our assets folder. And all we gotta do now is drag in this two more times because we have three posts in total. And we'll open these up to the essential properties. Bada beam, bada boom, go into our assets. Let's do post two and just drag it into the post bit right here. And the same with post three. And just like that, we've made a couple of UI elements that are super easy to customize and show off a couple different posts. Animate this however you want. Just a cool little style thing you can do really, really quick in off the fix. And make it easy to edit later on. Let's hop on to the number three, which is a bit of a spinning globe, minimalistic kind of animation, just to show a little bit of maps. You know, you can never go wrong with maps. This one is super easy. You want a picture or an SVG, or anything really of a map, but you wanna keep it pretty simple, especially with the style. So in this case, I found this map on Vect Easy, uh, super nice for free, and you can use the AI version of this and just and import all the different countries and all that by itself, but it's a very high quality file and it can make your After Effects go very slow. So we're just gonna work with the picture for now. And I'm gonna scale this down a good bit, and I'm gonna add an extract effect to this because I don't wanna see 
uh, any other whites and we can always add a filter to this and make it whatever color we want to. In this case, I'm just gonna make it white and then I'm gonna pre-comp this and I'm gonna move all attributes into the new composition and I'm just gonna name this map pre. Then going into this composition, I wanna make sure that transparency is turned off so I can see the map or change the color so you can see it. And then I'm gonna use this little tool down here which will let us select a region of interest. What we want to do here is get as close to the edges as possible. So you see on this side right here, I wanna drag this in to be right up against it. And that's because we will be using an effect called CC Sphere. And for that to work properly, we need to have as little extra fluff around the edges as possible. Once we've done that, we can go into composition and crop comp to region of interest. So now our composition is just the size of what we just selected. Back into the spinning globe, we will now add CC Sphere, and that will give you a little globe. For this, I'm gonna change the light and shading settings a little bit. I'm just gonna set the ambient to 100, and that'll just make it nice and even, and you can turn all the other things to zero in there. You have the option to do a full or inside or outside, so it'll let you pretty much have more control of what you choose to spin. So right now, if we spin it, you can see you can see the inside and the outside. What I like to do to spice it up a little bit is if we set this back, I'm actually gonna duplicate this one more time and I'm just gonna set the render to outside on this one. And then on the other one, I'm gonna change it to inside and I'm gonna add another fill to this one and just set it a little bit darker than what we currently have and that'll just give you a little bit more depth. Easy way to do this is to link up the rotation to one another. So if you search for rotation, all you wanna do here is take one of them and just link it to the other one. So Z to Z, Y to Y, and X to X. And you just wanna rotate it within this one. And you can see it just gives you a little bit more depth in here. And let's just spin it a little bit, keyframe that. Go forward, let's do two seconds, and just rotate it whichever way you want to. And now we have a little bit of a rotating map. Maybe it was a little bit too much. We'll just spread that out for now. But that is a pretty cool, neat effect. Now you can add a little bit more detail to this. Let's say you wanna select a certain part. Let's do a little marker right here. So we'll take a circle element. Let's just do an ellipse and draw out a little ellipse here. We can keep the stroke, maybe make that like a darker gray, maybe something like that. And then a nice blue inside, maybe add a drop shadow set that to zero in the distance, and then just increase the softness a little bit and decrease the opacity just a little bit, just so we get a nice little marker here. Maybe set that to something like three. And if we go back into the spinning globe now, and let's rotate a little bit, you can see we now have a marker right there. You can even just do one side and not the other if you wanna keep it super clean. And you can stylize it a little bit more by adding a solid, adding a grid effect to it. And let's just do width and height sliders, set the border to something like two, and then increase this a good bit until you get a nice looking grid, something like that. And then all we're gonna do here is select our rectangle tool and draw out a little rectangle here. And we are just gonna center that up right in the middle, change, remove the stroke and change the fill to a black. And then we're gonna add a false box blur and a solid composite to this. And let's increase the, bo the bo false box blur a little bit. And then we will take our grid and we'll just track mat it to the new shape layer, put it behind the map. And then we will change this to be a luma mat. So it looks at the values and stuff for the, instead of the alpha. And you can play around with the size of this until you get a look that you kind of want. But it's just a nice little way of adding a bit of a faded out grid to this. Just looks pretty cool, stylized and whatnot. You can even add a circle to this as well. Let's do an ellipse, just click and hold shift. And then we're just gonna center that up and place it behind our world map. And let's give it a little bit of, and let's remove the fill and give it a stroke, maybe just a light grayish type thing. And then we can search for the size and just decrease that until it matches with the outside of it, just to give it a nice little edge there that looks super, super sweet. And that's pretty much it for the spinning globe look. The last little visual data type thing I wanna go through is a podium type thing. I saw it in a Vox video recently and I thought it was super cool. I've used something similar before, but I really thought it was an interesting idea and I don't see it used often. The premise for this is essentially a podium. I think we all know it from first, second, third place. Great way to rank like maybe three items, three products you've tested. 
all we're gonna need for this in this case is a picture of a man that I have right here. Just cut him out and let's just place him right there. Now we need to create a cube that he can stand on and actually be our podium. And for this, we are gonna use our rectangle tool. I'm just gonna select it, remove the stroke from it. And then I'm gonna select a inside color. And I'm just gonna make this maybe like an orangey type color. I'm just gonna click and drag while holding shift to create a perfect square. Now for this, we're actually gonna turn this into a 3D layer to make it a little bit easier. You can do a fake 3D cube kind of like we've done before. But for this, we're just gonna switch over to Cinema 4D renderer and extrude it and make it look a little bit nicer. This will also let us change the height of it a lot easier, which is well very useful in a case where you wanna make a podium because you want number one to be higher up and then second and third place. Once we have it switched over to the Cinema 4D renderer, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit R to bring up the rotation and I'm just gonna flip it 90 degrees on the X axis, so minus 90, and then we can add some extrusion to it. So if you go into geometry options and then add some extrusion, that'll just make sure that it goes downwards. And then let's just drag it up so we can actually see it and make it just maybe a little bit taller. And then we can duplicate this however many times we want to. So let's say we duplicate it one time, move it over to the right and let's search for extrusion and decrease that a little bit so that we now have a number two podium and then duplicate this and search for extrusion again, move it over this way. And this time we are gonna make sure that it is tiny for the losers. No participation medals over here. Now we can take our guy, our businessman, let's pop him up here and put him in front so it kind of looks like he's actually standing on this, you get what I'm saying? Like that. And let's hit you. I'm gonna select all, I'm gonna right click down here, create a new null and I'm gonna link Make sure to turn it into 3D. And then I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna parent it to the null. Now, if I hit P and Shift R to bring up the rotation, we can kind of rotate this a little bit, get a little bit perspective so that we get a little bit more surface for this guy to stand on. And this guy doesn't need to be 3D for what we're doing. You can if you want to, it's really up to you. But it's looking pretty flat right now. So we can do a little bit more to spice this up. And let's start with this first one. And what we can do here is if you go into contents and select a rectangle, you can change the color of the sides. And this is also why I like having the extrusion going downwards instead of the other way around. It makes it a little bit easier when you add the colors because you can color all the sides in one go. So let's add a color to all the sides and maybe make just a little bit of a darker orange than what it currently is, just to give it a little bit more depth. And we can just add some, copy the side color. And let's just open it up and paste it onto these, paste that onto the other rectangles as well. So now we have a nice little podium. You can even, let's just take this back and set it to zero real quick. And let's add some numbers to this. Let's do a one for the winners. And let's make it a black color for this example. Scale that up a little bit so we know who, who the real winner is. And let's center that up right there. Looks pretty good. Turn it into 3D. And we might need to move this forward a little bit like that and move it up. And then we can take all of these again and we can link them to the null. And you can do the same thing with the guy as well. If you put them into 3D space, boom. And maybe move them up just a little bit and link him to the null as well. And now we can rotate this however we want and we get a nice guy standing on a little podium. Turn it down just a little bit. And just like that, we've got a nice little podium. You can add some animation to the extrusion as well. If you take all of these three, search for extrusion. Let's go to about one second, keyframe all of these and set them to zero. And you can add something like a nice little sexy speed for, for the sake of it, you know what I'm saying? And that just gives us a little bit more depth to it. You can animate the scale too. Let's take these, move them forward just a little bit. Go to about a little bit after. Just hit S to bring up the scale. Keyframe that and go to the beginning. Set them to zero. And let's add some sexy speed to that too. Let's just decrease the quality a little bit so we can see it a little bit faster. Something like third. And now we just get a nice little platform that animates out and down. And just like that, you've got a nice little one, two, three, bada bing, bada boom. Use it for whatever you want. Just a little saucy saucy, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, 
I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you learned something new or feel inspired to create something yourself with some of the things we've looked at today. Again, if you are interested in project files, they will be available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash my poll. Outside of that, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, whatever you feel like, and uh, I'll see you again next week. Thank you. Peace out.